Okay, so we are going to be talking about the deciduous forest. Um, so we just got done talking about the rainforest, which has an abundance of rain and those levels of vegetation. Um, now the deciduous forest is quite different. So the climate has four distinct seasons. So summer, fall, winter, and spring. Um, and it gets a moderate amount of rainfall. So the rainforest gets a ton of rainfall. The desert doesn't get much. Moderate means kind of right in the middle. So the temperatures in the deciduous rainforest depend on what season, just like us. Um, so it can be freezing all the way to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, rainfall is about 20 to 70 inches. And if you remember, rainfall in the rainforest can get up to 160 inches, where the desert gets less than 10 inches of rain. So kind of in the middle. All right, so climate, these seasons. Um, so during the summer, there's warm weather and very green leaves. Everything has leaves on it. Um, but during the fall, the trees will lose their leaves. So the leaves will start turning colors when that uh, chlorophyll starts to break down and then they'll lose their leaves, they'll fall to the ground. Um, and this is to conserve water. So why it needs to conserve water is because when you go to winter, you get a lot of freezing weather. Um, and when you get freezing weather, that water freezes and it gets a lot harder to obtain, to get. So the trees lose their leaves in order to conserve water, and they need to do that because the water is going about to freeze during the winter. And then you get back to spring at the top, and this is when the leaves start to grow back because that water melts and they're able to get water again so the leaves start to grow back. Spring is also when um, a lot of your spring flowers will start growing. Um, when it gets warm enough for them to start growing again. All right, so we are in a mix of two different biomes where we live in North Texas. Um, so we have grassland and deciduous forest. So where we live is kind of a mix of both, but you can tell that this area we have, we have some grassland and some deciduous forest. All right, animal adaptations. So migration is when um, the organism will move somewhere else, the animal will move somewhere else in order to find food and water and somewhere where the climate is better for them, especially because the water freezes in the winter. Hibernation, like the bear you see above, this is when an organism will store up fat and sleep through the winter. So they don't, they get all their food and water when it's available, they'll store it up and then they'll sleep right through the winter when there's little food and water. Food storage, you see a lot in things like squirrels, which is on the top right of your screen. So they will store up food when it's abundant so that they'll have a little storage, um, a little pile of food to eat during the winter. And then a structural adaptation, because the ones we've been talking about are all things that the animal does. So those would be behavioral, but structure, something actually on the animal's body would be something like thick fur or a layer of fat like the otter has that's to your right. So this helps keep the animal warm during the winter. Plant adaptation. So we already kind of talked about the trees losing their leaves in fall. This helps the tree conserve water because it needs a lot of water and there's not much in the winter. So it will lose its leaves so it doesn't need that much water during the winter and then it grows them back during the spring. Thick bark on trees, this is just to protect them, keep them safe during the cold winter. And then of course our spring flowers, they only grow during part of the year. So they'll grow during the warm months, they'll start popping up during spring and then they'll die in the fall, winter. But the seeds are left behind and when it gets warm again, they'll start growing again. Okay, the soil. We've been talking about the soil in these biomes, and the last one was the rainforest. Now, it had a lot of plants and animals dying and decaying, but if you remember, there was so much rain falling down that it washed away that nutrient. But that is not the case in the deciduous forest. Since those trees lose all of their leaves, there's a ton of leaves falling to the ground and decaying and being decomposed by decomposers. What's happening is that nutrients, a lot of nutrients from those leaves and everything else is getting put into the soil, but 
it gets to stay there because there's not too much rain coming down either. There's not rain washing it away, it gets to stay in the soil. So the soil is very nutrient rich. And then human impact. So the biggest threat to the forest is agricultural. So things like farming and ranching, logging, cutting down forest in any way, this is called deforestation. So this can cause forest to restart in a process called succession. All right, so ecolog ecological succession. So succession is how areas recover from catastrophic events or start from scratch. So those are the two different kinds of succession we're gonna talk about. Um, so they can recover, so it could be like a mature forest or area that a catastrophic event comes in and wipes everything out, or it could be a new area like um, where magmas come from a volcano and turned into rock um, and we can start the process from scratch. So these types of successions, it's in a series, it's a predictable cycle. Um, and it's very gradual as well. It can take hundreds of years or even thousands of years if you're starting from scratch. So two types, primary. So primary is where you start from scratch. It's the first time that things are gonna grow there. And secondary is where you already had something growing there and it got wiped out. So this is its second chance. So primary succession, like I said, if you see the picture of the volcano. So this is a place that starts without any soil. Like a volcano would be covered in um, cooled lava or igneous rock. And this can take thousands of years. Um, so this can happen at things like volcanoes, landslides, glaciers. And then you have secondary succession. So this is where there's already soil there. There was already things growing there before and then something came in and wiped them out. This takes hundreds of years because they're not starting from scratch. This is their second chance. So human activities like deforestation can start secondary succession and then this also happens after big forest fires. All right, so if you see the picture, you can see on your left hand side that there's an overmature forest. So one thing about forest fires are that natural ones um, can actually be very good for the ecosystem because over mature forest, things are competing for um, biotic and abiotic factors. Um, and sometimes they need a restart. And also fire puts a lot of nutrients back into the soil. So anyways, you have a over mature forest and then the fire comes in and wipes it out. So then you'll see that it will have to start over again. This is secondary succession because there was already a forest there and then it has a second chance on this side. So you can tell that it starts out with grass and little um, flowers and then smaller woody trees will start to grow um, and grow until you have more of a mature forest there at the end. And then when that mature forest gets over mature, there might be another forest fire that starts over um, with another cycle of secondary succession. All right, so pioneer species. These are the first species to arrive. Um, and why they're the first species to arrive are these are normally species that don't need a lot of soil to survive, um, like lichens. So if you're starting with primary succession, so something like the sides of a volcano, lichens are something that will start growing first because they don't need the soil to survive and then this will slowly turn into grasses and small plants and then trees and then larger trees until you get to climax species so climax species are the last stage of succession this is when you have a mature forest um, or a mature area and an example of this would be a sugar maple in the deciduous forest, but these are like your large trees 